Hello everyone and happy First Chapter Friday. We have the book When We Were Lost by Kevin Wignall and it is a James Patterson Presents book. The Ford is by James Patterson. As someone who loves to tell stories, I found that the best ones take you in a direction you'd never expected to go. I started reading When We Were Lost thinking it would be a straightforward survival tale of kids who, whose plane crashes in a remote jungle. Kevin Wignall certainly packed it with all the nail-biting suspense and wild thrills of a terrific disaster narrative, but I was delighted to find it ends up being much more than that. We see the catastrophe unfold through the eyes of Tom, a friendless kid who just wants to be left alone. I think we all have a little bit of that in us, a part that makes us feel like we never quite belong. This story has Tom fighting to survive unexpected situations, the savage jungle, and high school so social hierarchies, and finding them both vicious to contend with in their own ways. In the end, this story is about being lost in more ways than one and what it means to be truly found. Prologue. It's called the butterfly effect, and it's part of the chaos theory that everyone loves. The idea is that a butterfly flapping its wings can cause a hurricane on the other side of the world. Not directly, of course. It's not like the wings disturb some air and that disturbance disturbs more air and so on until it grows into a hurricane, that would be just stupid. What it really means is that everything is incredibly complex, with millions of tiny factors built into almost every occurrence. And if you remove just one of them, like the beat of a butterfly's wings, then it might happen differently, or not even at all. So years ago, some jerk named Matt Nicholson thought it might be funny to spike a girl's drink by slipping in vodka shots without her noticing. Unlikely as it seems, Matt Nicholson is the butterfly, and the spiking of the drinks is the beat of his wings. The girl was Sally Morgan, and soon enough, she was reeling. These were their first weeks of college, so when Sally went staggering out of the bar looking green, no one paid much attention. No one except Matt Nicholson, who thought it was hilarious. Outside the bar, a girl named Julia Darby spotted Sally, and though she didn't know her, she knew this girl was in trouble and needed help. Julia stepped in and managed to get her to a bathroom stall just before the inevitable happened. They were in different schools, studying different subjects. So if Matt Nicholson hadn't spiked Sally's drinks, Sally and Julia wouldn't have met. Not then, maybe not ever. And they wouldn't have become best friends. And Julia wouldn't have introduced Sally to her friend from back home, Rob Calloway. So Sally and Rob wouldn't have fallen in love gotten married after college, had a child. And when the time came to make their wills, they wouldn't have chosen Julia to be the guardian of their child, should anything happen to them. And one night when the child was nine, if the cab that they'd ordered hadn't failed to pick up Sally and Rob from the restaurant outside Hopton, Connecticut, where they'd been celebrating their 10th wedding anniversary, they wouldn't have decided to walk home along the road instead. And if the girlfriend of someone named Sean Hodges hadn't dumped him for being such a loser, he wouldn't have gotten drunk and cried and driven over to her place. And if she'd taken him back or let him in, he wouldn't have hit two people walking along a dark and quiet country road, killing them. So as much as they never really imagined it happening, Sally and Rob's child, nine-year-old Tom Calloway, 
ended up in the guardianship of their oldest friend, who was Julia. But it has to be said, she was someone they hadn't really had much to do with for in recent years. In truth, they tired of her woes and her flakiness. But even if it had crossed their minds to amend their wills, death just caught up with them first. And being landed with the responsibility of looking after a child had little impact on Julia's lifestyle. So it didn't matter eight years later that a school trip to Costa Rica for a special environmental project was completely not the sort of thing Tom would usually do because Julia wanted to go on a yoga retreat in Italy and the dates fit perfectly. So in the end, to escape her pleading, Tom agreed to go to Costa Rica, a place he didn't want to visit with people he didn't want to be with and to do things he didn't want to do. That is the butterfly effect. If a jerk named Matt Nicholson had not spiked the drinks of a girl named Sally Morgan, Tom Calloway, if he had been born at all, would not have been boarding a plane more than 20 years later, a plane that, unbeknownst to Tom or any of the other people in the school party, would never reach its destination. Chapter 1 It wasn't that Tom didn't care about the environment. He recycled, and he liked those Dave Attenborough documentaries on TV, but he couldn't help thinking that there was a lot of hypocrisy out there. Hypocrisy, like burning a ton of fuel to fly a whole bunch of school kids from the richest country in the world to look at plants and butterflies in Costa Rica. He just didn't buy it. That was one of the reasons he didn't want to be on this trip, because it was fake. A vacation dressed up as a saving the world package. A vacation without the fun. Paying resort prices to stay in some insect-infested eco-camp. And then there were the people. Thirty-nine other kids. Three teachers, one teacher's wife. He supposed the other kids were okay, interesting in their own ways, probably friendly, certainly friendly enough that they were friends with each other. It was just that Tom wasn't really one of them. Once he, when he's a little kid, he was given a jigsaw puzzle as a gift, a complex picture of a castle, and one wet weekend, he completed it. Only to find that there was one piece left over, and it wasn't a duplicate, but an odd piece that had crept in from some other puzzle. Tom had kept it, and it's, he still had it at home. At the time, he hadn't been sure why he kept it, but in the years since, he had come to think that he was that jigsaw puzzle. He was shaped right. He looked right. At first glance, most people might have imagined him a perfect fit, but he didn't fit. Whichever picture he belonged in, it wasn't this one, the one that his life was right now, and he was fine with that, because he realized that the spare piece he'd found in his jug jigsaw had probably been a missing piece in someone else's jigsaw, and somewhere, maybe at college, maybe later, It'd be a picture that he would fit into. It wasn't just Tom who thought this way about him either. The other kids knew he was different, detached, playing the game by his own rules. Even the teachers saw it and unfailingly mentioned it in his school's uniquely lengthy report cards, which Julia never even read, the most recent one being no exception. Tom's academic record speaks for itself, and I have to commend him on it. I only wish he would make more effort to become an active part of our homeroom group. As it is, he is aloof to the point of being unfriendly, which is a great shame because I feel he could contribute enormously to the group if he chose to do so. Mr. Glinster Homeroom. 
Well done, Tom, on an impressive junior year. As you know, I've urged you to throw yourself just a little more into the life of Hopton High, and I hope your involvement with the forthcoming trip to Costa Rica is an indication that you have heeded my advice and will take the chance to bond with your peers. Principal Rachel Freeman Tom is a puzzle. His work is of a consistently high standard, and his comments in class are always incisive and to the point. I only wish he would give a little more of himself, both to his studies and to his fellow students. Ms. Graham, AP English Literature. Ms. Graham was a puzzle, too. She was young enough and attractive enough that it sometimes felt a little weird being alone with her. And she told Julia this year in a parent-teacher conference that she was desperate for Tom to become more involved with his classmates. She was here now, one of the teachers on the trip, and she was currently doing one last head count before boarding, slowly working her way across the group, her mouth moving as she counted in silence. But as she reached Tom and stopped dead, a look of amazement or confusion followed by a strange smile as if she still couldn't quite believe he was on this trip. She cursed under her breath then and went back to beginning, her mouth forming a silent and labored one, two, three, and perhaps that summed up as well as anything how Tom didn't fit in, how unlikely it was for Tom to be part of a trip like this, that his very presence was enough to leave Miss Graham incapable of counting to 40. So, exciting novel, and as um, James Patterson said, it does have so many more layers than just a plane crash trip. First of all, in Costa Rica, it's in the, it's not quite going to Costa Rica, there's the problem with the plane brings them to the Amazon. So it's all the dangers that are real in the Amazon that you encounter as you read the book. And then um, how these kids get along. Some people have brought up many times the uh, very much the comparison to the classic uh, Lord of the Flies. It's not as violent as that. I don't want to scare you off, but um, there are some comparisons that make sense. So I hope you try the book. It's quite a thriller and have a great week. Take care.